So here's the story of Brasserie 32. This is, this is where I discovered, almost by accident, how to do this, yeah? This is where I discovered this. So this is my friend, my best friend, Adrian. Adrian's from France. Uh, he's a Frenchie. He got chucked into my class at school. Um, didn't speak a word of English at the time. Still don't really speak English, to be fair. Um, in year nine. Year nine. So I was probably 13, 14, something like that when I met him, yeah? Best friends now. Anyway, Adrian's dream job, Adrian's passion is um, cooking. Loves to cook, right? He's a chef at heart. But he wasn't. He went to university and he studied musical engineering. He's actually like a, some sort of weird and wonderful music engineer. Worked for Lionsgate, right? So he did like all the sound editing for a lot of the Disney films and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, made it sound like awesome. Because he loves music as well. But his real passion is cooking. Yeah? It's amazing if we're doing like every now and then we'll do like a, uh, you know, couples come dine with me. If I'm going around Adrian's house for a come dine with me, I'm like well excited. I'm just like, what am I going to get, you know? He knows what he's going to get if he comes my house. He's getting beans on toast, right? <laughs> but Adrian, you go around his, he cooks a weird and wonderful. He's such a good cook, but he loves it as well. His passion is cooking. Anyway, he went off traveling the world. He left his job with his, um, with his wife because they wanted to take a year out before they settled down properly, and he wanted to at least travel the world for six months. So they went away, and, you know, he does what most people do when they travel. He found himself, right? He did, I want to I wanna follow my dreams, is what he said when he came back. So when he came back, he didn't go back to his highly paid job in London. He got offered a job at a local restaurant in Gravesend called Brasserie 32. Just opened, right? French menu. He knew the owner. The owner knew him. He needed a head chef, and Adrian wanted the job. So Adrian started working as the head chef at Brasserie 32. This restaurant had just opened in Gravesend. Now, for those of you that know Gravesend, it's not really a place you want to be eating food, right? Really. <laughs> There's not a lot of places that are good. Simon will tell you because he's from there as well, right? But, however, Brasserie 32, on the other hand, sort of changed that, right? So, Adrian, anyway, Adrian got the job, but he was working all of the hours under the sun. Those of you guys that know any chefs or, you know, know people that work in that industry, terrible hours socially, yeah? You're talking like Saturdays, Sundays, Friday nights. I never got to see my best friend. We couldn't go to the pub and have a game of pool and a pint and a pack of crisps, right? We couldn't do any of this stuff anymore because I weren't seeing him. Yeah? He was very, very busy. So one night, we decided to go in there. We'd been in there for about two months. And me and my, my now fiance, uh, Emily, we, walked, we said, right, let's go. We, we uh, called up, booked a table with Adrian. Adrian said, yeah, of course you can come down. You don't have to book a table. So we walked down to the uh, Brasserie 32. We walked in the doors, right? It's lovely. First time I've been in there. Again, I'm busy, so I haven't really got to go in there. I walked in Brasserie 32, and it is empty. Like, you know, tumbleweed. Well, no. Right? It's completely empty. By the way, this is a Thursday night, which is a fairly popular night for restaurants, right? Thursday night, probably half seven, yeah? So peak time, really. Empty. Not a single person in there. A lovely, lovely man walks up to me. He's fairly, you know, five foot five, something like that. Six guy, middle-aged guy, probably like 45. Um, Grey hair. Really, really nice chap. Comes out of an apron and walks up. He says, hi, guys. How, how, how's it doing? He said, yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, my name's Matt. Uh, Adrian's friend, we booked a table. And he said, oh, all right, nice to meet you, Matt. What's your name, darling? Emily. I said, okay, Emily, cool. Can I get you a drink before we sit down? I said, yeah, mate, definitely. I'll have a Kraken and Coke. Love rum, yeah? Love, Kraken's my favorite. And Emily was just like, yeah, she'll have a wine. And she had, um, you know, one of those white wines. I don't know the bloody names of them, you know, the, um, the Sauvignon thing. Sauvignon Blanc. She said, yeah, I'll have a Sauvignon Blanc. And he says, right, coming right up. Go and sit down. And I'll get you a Kraken and Coke and a Sauvignon Blanc and bring it right over. I said, awesome, thank you. Sat down. He brought us over our drinks. Had a little word with us, told us about the food, told us about the menu, gave us some recommendations. We ordered. I ordered the steak. Lovely. Yeah. Adrian come out about 20 minutes later with our food, all ready to go. And it was amazing. This food was so good. I knew he was a good cook anyway, right? But it was quality. My steak was perfect. The peppercorn sauce, it was in delicious. We were waiting on hands, but obviously because they were empty anyway, so they could wait on us, right? But they were, they were keeping our Sauvignon Blancs and our rum and Cokes topped up all night. The service was fantastic. And I sat around and I looked at this empty restaurant and I tried to figure out why they were empty. It wasn't the food, obviously. The food was amazing. 
It wasn't the service. The service was great. It wasn't because it was run down. The place was beautiful. The reason they were empty and the reason probably you guys aren't selling as many things, selling enough products or selling enough services isn't because it's bad or rubbish or no one likes it. It's for one simple reason. No one knows it exists. That's it. I looked around this place and I said, if more people knew, first of all, I'm coming back. Secondly, I'm telling my friends about it, which, which screams at me that this should be a business that's thriving, which a lot of you guys are at. A lot of you guys have got great products and services, but no one knows about you, yeah? So you're invisible. So I sat there and I tried to figure it out, and I, said, I sat down and I said, look, this is ridiculous. My mate's working every single night, but he's not, he's not making really any money. The business isn't doing well, but I've lost him. So I said, right, I can't this idea. I said, look, you know, I've been doing a lot of this, uh, testing a lot of this engagement stuff on Facebook. I s- sat the owner down, Andrew his name was. I sat Andrew down and I said, look, mate, I honestly believe that this place could be heaving if more people knew about it. I've got an idea that I think might work. And it was this exact strategy. I said, all I want, I don't want any money for it, all right, because I'm doing it for Adrian. If we can get you so busy, you've got to hire another chef so he can have the occasional Friday, Saturday night off and we can have a few bevies down the pub. I'll be happy, Yeah. So he said, okay. He said, well, how much is this going to cost me? I said, I want five pounds a day. Can you spare five quid a day? He said, of course. Of course I can spare five pounds a day. I said, right. So the strategy was, I took Billy. He was here a minute ago. He's left now. I took Billy on their day off, which is Monday. And I said to Adrian, right, I want to film every single meal on the menu being made from start to finish. Every single one. I want to see it going. I want to see it on the board. Everything that goes into every, every single um, uh, dish. I want to see it in the pan. I want to see what you do with it right up to the point where it's served, beautifully presented on a plate, on the table. And then I want, to, I want you to cut into it as if I, watching it, am about to bite into it. All right? And this was the content that we come up with for a restaurant. Any of you guys that are in, uh, have got any sort of bricks and mortar place where you want to get people through the door, bars, restaurants, salons now. We've got a, 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 a huge chain a salon chain in Inverness now is one of our clients, and we use this strategy for them. Absolutely turn their business around. Do you want to see an example of one of these videos? Yeah? Here it is. Everyone's, everyone's hungry now, aren't they? Everyone having steak for, di- for lunch now, yeah? yeah? I hope they do steak downstairs, sir. <laughs> yeah? So, the, all the men watching out like, oh, fire and meat, yes. <laughs> Everything a man wants. Right? So, what did this do, this video? Well, we started pushing this out exactly like I told you. We posted it on their Facebook page. No one knew it was there, obviously. We then promoted it using the engagement objective on Facebook to an audience of people in Gravesend only. Gravesend. And we showed it, most people above the age of sort of 20 odd could go to a restaurant. So we made sure everyone in Gravesend above the age of 20 was seeing this video. Five pounds a day. We run each video for a week. Yeah? Now, after, um, I don't know how many there were. There were about six, six or 10. I can't remember how many dishes we ended up promoting. Once a week, right? We ended up racking up hundreds of thousands of video views. Now, we knew that these people were in Gravesend. Now, this is important for you guys to remember. When you're going into a content strategy, it's a more longer-term strategy for something like this. As in, I told these guys as well. I said, I don't want you to think that I'm going to spend five pounds that night and you're going to have 10 people calling up to book a table. That's not how this works. This is called an awareness strategy to build awareness around you guys so that people know you exist. So what is going to happen is someone's going to see that video 
All right? Someone's going to watch it. Someone's going to see it on Thursday. Is he immediately going to call up and book a table? Some might, of course, right? But what's more than likely going to happen is that four weeks down the line, when that man that had seen that steak video, here's a shout from the kitchen, babe, should we go out for dinner tonight? The first thing that pops into his head is that video. And he says, yeah, do you know where we should go? We should go to that place called Brasserie 32 because I saw a really nice looking steak being cooked on there on Facebook the other day. Your solution is now in their minds. Your solution is now there solving the problem of where do I eat? Yeah? He's, he had a problem. Where do I eat? Bang. The video's there. Brasserie 32 is now the solution. Make sense, guys? Yeah? The results. Three months later, no joke. This is less than 12 weeks. Just shy of 12 weeks later, I walked into Brasserie 32. I was told when I first went there, I don't need to book a table. So Friday night, me and Emily walk up. We get to Brasserie 32. Couldn't get in the place. <laughs> it is Ramo. Sold out. All right? There's no Andrew. Andrew's nowhere to be seen. My Kraken and Coke's just behind the bar still. Emily Sauvignon Blanc's just getting warm over there. No one's there to serve us because they're so busy. You couldn't get a seat in the place. I finally caught Andrew's eye. He came over. He said, he remembered my name, which was a really nice touch. He said, oh, Matt, Emily, sorry, we can't, literally can't seat you tonight. We're full up. I said, well, what about that? We can come back. He said, no, all night, fully booked. In 12 weeks, they went from empty to making zero money to being sold out. Fully booked on five pounds a day. Now, unlike us and some of our clients, they didn't even go up from five pounds a day. They literally spent five pounds a day on, and then they didn't move up. But it was getting a thousand views a day. Thousand people. Grayson's not that big. You know, maybe, uh, I don't know, I really don't know actually, maybe a couple of hundred thousand people maybe, uh, less than that probably, right? So it's not that big. Pretty much everyone in Gray's End had seen one of these videos after 12 weeks. Yeah? A lot of people had seen one, two, three, four of the videos. Yeah? So this was the place to go. And the beautiful thing about the restaurant, because it was so good, as in service was amazing, like I said, food was fantastic. Once they've got them in the door once, they're coming back. They had so many repeat customers. The, the, the goal, the hard bit, was getting people just to get them in the door once. Make them aware it exists. Make them aware of how good it is. The world you live in today, ladies and gentlemen, you can do this for as little as five pounds a day. You can reach everyone you want to reach so that everyone knows about you. It's the only time in history it's been possible on this scale for this price ever. So consider yourselves really, really lucky. All right? And then after, yeah, after about three months, Andrew had to hire another chef. They were too busy. He had to get a new chef in. All right? He had to hire another chef. So Adrian, every now and then, uh, had a few days off. So me and him were reunited again. Look at that. Best buddies. Good story? Yeah? All right? So that was using that exact strategy on a restaurant. It can work on a restaurant. It can work in any, pretty much any niche out there. I'm telling you. The, the key is awareness. How can we get more people to know you exist? Engagement, 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 objective on Facebook to create awareness, to then follow up with those people with some sort of offer. Yeah? Cool. 